Sabbath peace. Hush, boy. It's time to go. <laughs> Goodness gracious. <laughs> Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together in here and learn that the word of truth as given to us by the most high God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace, through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Last week, oh, uh, none of y'all was here, huh? I was. Oh, okay, what we got? <laughs> what we got? What we got? You can't remember nothing from last week? Yeah, y'all should have been. But what what we got? You don't remember nothing from last week. Oh my goodness gracious. You can't buy good help. Who in the chat? Let me see. What we got from last week? All right, Sister Ruth. You know what I'm saying? Sister Ruth say hallelujah. You know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. That's how Christian get out the you know what I'm saying, not giving an answer though. What we got? <laughs> What king were we talking about? Was it Jeroboam? Mel. Y'all remember the man of God? Remember? The what man of God mean? came. He told Jeroboam, yo, you know what I'm saying? Such and such is going to happen to the altar. Jeroboam stuck out his hand. His hand got stuck the way it was, got dried up. He asked the man of God to pray for him, pray for him. His hand went back to normal. Man of God, or he asked the man of God, he's like, all right, for sure, look, won't you come with me? Man of God was like, no, I can't go with you. Man of God bumped into a prophet. Prophet was like, hey, won't you come with me, get some drink and some water? I mean, some bread and some water. Prophet, man of God was like, nah, I can't do that. The prophet lied to him, was like, nah, I just heard from God. And God told me he wants you to come with me. Right? So the man of God went with him, directly disobeying the word that the Most High God gave to the man of God. And then the Most High God gave a word to the prophet and told the prophet, tell the man of God that because he didn't listen to me, his body will not make it back to the gravesite of his family. Right? And after that, he is riding on a donkey and a lion jumped out. And what do lions do when they see something that might look little? You know what I'm saying? Like a predator. I mean, look like something they, they, should, they, should, they should prey on. What would a lion do? do? Huh? They hunt it, right? And after you get done hunting something, what you do after that? You eat it, right? What do you think they did to the man of God? You right? You, look, you see a donkey and you see a, a man riding it, right? Naturally, what is the lion going to do? It might eat the donkey. Might eat both of them, right? Guess what this lion did? Left the donkey. Left the donkey. And left the man, too. Didn't eat either one of them. What he did do, though, is he tore the man. and He tore him, right? Into another word, he killed the man, right? Ripped him up with his claws or something, but he didn't eat him. And then the donkey was standing right there, and he never messed with the donkey. Then the lion stood right there by the dead body and by the live donkey and just stood there. Right? And what that's intended to do is to show you that the Most High God did this thing. Because if, if it was a regular situation, lion would have ate everything that it was hungry to eat. Or, you know what I'm saying, it would have left everything alone. But, and it wouldn't have just stayed there and just let this, this donkey just sit there. But no, this lion stayed there, right? So then the people went and they got him, the prophet, you know what I'm saying, and his family, they got him. 
they buried the the man of God, right? But they didn't bury him in, his, in the man of God's family's uh, gravesite. They buried him somewhere else. And then the, the prophet was like, surely everything that that man of God said is going to come to pass. So the reason why I love this story and the reason why it's so important to understand it is it goes back to what we say in the beginning. We say any gift that you might have, whether it be a gift of tongues or a gift of prophecy, right? It will be used against you in the day of judgment. So the reason that we say that is because just because the Most High God give you prophecy or just because he give you tongues or give you some other some other spiritual gift, you can't rely on that for your salvation. It is very important that we understand that salvation comes by the word. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Give me, uh, give me Romans chapter. You know what I'm saying? Because it might be some Christians in there. You know what I'm saying? Let me see. How many Christians we got in the chat room right now? You know what I'm saying? We might have a Christian in there. So you sometimes you got to, you know what I'm saying? You ever, like Drake. If Drake got a show. Oh, it's a great, Drake ain't cool? Huh? Ain't Drake cool? <laughs> he not cool? Yeah. He all right? No? He yeah, all right. Yeah, all right. You know what I'm saying? If Drake got a show, who y'all like then? Lil Uzi Vert. No. Wait, one. Who's our favorite rapper? Yeah, who the who the who the guy right now? You. Young boy. You better believe me. Young. Oh my goodness gracious. Who who the guy right now? Young boy for you too. Oh, okay. I don't really. I'm not really like that. That's right. You got you got good music taste. You don't listen to none of this nonsense. Wayne. Lil Wayne. Jay Z. It's for me. How does he know about those people anyway? Who? The hard. How's he know about Lil Wayne and Jeezy? Jeezy? He didn't say Jeezy. He said Jay Z. Oh, Jay Z. You know what I'm saying? You know what that is? So listen. You take Drake. And Drake can do singing. He can rap. He can all them rappers. He can do all those different things, right? So when he have a show and he do a concert, you think it's going to be all rap? No. Sometimes he got to cater to the people who like rap. He got to cater sometimes to the people who like singing you know what i'm saying so sometimes we got to cater to the christians you know what I'm sometimes it's christians out there and we got to make sure that we cater to them and you know what christians like they like some news you christians don't want to hear about no darn jerob darn boom what a christian gonna do with Jer did jeroboam die on the cross that's what christian looks did jeroboam die on the cross yes or no no jeroboam ain't die okay now a christian don't want to hear that stuff sometimes we got to get a christian what they want to hear so let's go to romans chapter 10 give me verse 17. This is Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith comes by hearing. So faith comes by hearing. Listen, we're talking about the faith of the Most High God. The book is telling you, if you're going to get faith from the Most High God, it's going to come because you heard something. Watch this. So faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And the hearing by the word of God. So ultimately, where does faith come from? The word. You can't be saved without faith. So salvation comes by the word. That's it. Right? The word is what gives us salvation. Salvation. So if you are not walking orderly according to the word that you hear, this word that we've been given, then it's nonsense. I don't care if you're a prophet. I don't care if you, if the most high God give you his word, but you don't listen to it. That's it. So this shows that when we read about the man of God, this shows that the man of God, although he was given the direct word of God, he did a miracle in the fact that Jeroboam put his arm out there and his whole arm folds up. Right? Ain't nobody ever seen no mess like that. That really happened. And this, the power of God is working through this man. He turned around. Most high God said, I'm going to let a lion kill you because you, you disobeyed me. You have to understand that all these different, we tend to look for signs and look for wonders because that's the type of people we are. But you have to understand at the end of the day, the true measure of a man, grab, uh, grab Ecclesiastes for me. Give me, give me Ecclesiastes, 12. give me uh, 12, and give me what, verse 12? Like the last verse of 12, I think. 
But I need to build up to it a little bit. Give me about verse 12. The last verse should be what, 15? No, I think it's 12. The oh, last oh, verse the is 12? The last verse, oh, oh. I don't think that chapter too long. I think it's kind of short. Yeah. It's important for us to understand what the what the true objective is. You get you get kind of sidetracked because there's a lot of stuff going on in this world and we kind of get caught up in this world. Like how many people want to be happy? Right? That's that's something that we can experience in this world. We want to be happy. What happened when you sad though? Is that the end of the world? No. Emotions are just like this. When was the last time you were sad? When was the last time you were sad? Been a while, huh? Yeah, three hours ago. <laughs> when was the last time you were sad? You be sad. It happens. And then guess what happens after that? Game two. <laughs> you be sad and then you be happy again and then you sad and then you get mad and then you be sorrowful and then you be happy again and it's just like this this is all it is just like this just like this because all that is this world this whole book ecclesiastes it talk about how everything is meaningless it's vanity it's meaningless you know why it's saying that because it's like you be happy and then you be sad and you be happy it's like what's the point all this stuff, it ain't got no point. What's the point? Right? So he spent 12 chapters talking about cycles, right? How it could be this way and it could be that way. And how sometimes this is like this and sometimes that's like this. This book changed my life. And at the end of it, he come to this conclusion. This is uh, Ecclesiastes chapter tw uh, 12, verse 12. Uh, verse 9. Verse 9? Verse 9. What's the last chapter? I mean, last verse. 14. 14, okay. Verse 9. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he said, moreover, more, look, moreover, because the preacher was wise, he did what? He still he, taught the people he knowledge. He taught the people still. Right? He had to keep teaching the people. It's important to understand that. He said, moreover, because the preacher was wise, he had to keep teaching the people. Being a teacher, being a being a leader, that comes out of a need. It ain't because you just want, you know what? There's a lot of people that go into leadership and going into teaching and all this stuff. She was like, you know, I just want to be a leader. I want to be great. I want people to see me. Oh man, that stuff gotta come from a need. You see, people need this. And I happen to I have a gift that the most high guy has given me that he never gave it for me. Most of our God ain't never going to give us anything for us. It's always going to be for other people. <clears throat> and the sooner y'all all realize that, the more the most high God to take care of you. You realize anything that I got, anything that I can do that's good, right, that serves a purpose according to the most high God, that is for other people. Right? Yeah. So when he look at it, because the preacher was wise, right, he's talking about himself. So the preacher, wise, what did he ask for? When he prayed. Y'all remember Solomon's prayer? This is Solomon, by the way. Wisdom and understanding. So wisdom and understanding, because the preacher was wise, still he taught the people knowledge. Keep going, watch this. Yeah, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. Right, he gave good heed. In other words, he gave good warnings, good teachings, good made people thoughtful about things that could happen. And then he sought out. In other words, he had to go research. Like scientists, he had to go find answers because he didn't have all the answers. He's like, you know what? Let me go learn about that and I'll come back to you. So he had to seek things out and then he had to set many things in order. This is what he taught. This whole book he's trying to explain to you, this worked like that, this worked like that, some people like this, because this is all of his research, right? And he set everything in order. In other words, he made it make sense for people. You know what I'm saying? You might go, you know what I'm saying? You might go, you might go, You might go to the farm, right? And if you go to the farm, you're not going to know when you walk on there what to do, what should come first, what should come next, which animals to, you know what I'm saying, to couple with the other animal. You're not going to know anything. 
But then a farmer who's been doing this for a while might put it all in order for you. Like, no, 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 no. look, son. First thing you want to do is you want to start with the chickens. Early in the morning, they wake up first. You know what I'm saying? You do the chicken. Then you go over here to the hall. Then you do this, that, and that, that, He put it in order for you to make it make sense. Right? So that's what, that's what King Solomon was doing in this book. Let's keep going. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words. Uh-huh. And that which was written was upright. Mm -hmm. Even words of truth. That's right. So look, the preacher was looking for, hmm, what's the right answer? Acceptable words. He's talking about, look, y'all asked me a question. I had to go seek these things out and put them in order. Now I have to find the right answer to give you. I have to find acceptable words to give you. And then I learned, man, listen, that which was written, in other words, the law, you can't get no better now. Watch what you say. That which was written was upright, even mm -hmm. words of truth. Uh-huh. The words of the wise are as golds and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies. Right? Listen to what that is. What is, what is it? Y'all know what a gold is? What is it? Gold. A gold. Oh, gold? Mm-hmm. Not gold. Not with the L. Gold. A gold... Think of it kind of like a, a little spear, kind of. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a long stick with a little, 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 you know what I'm saying? Sharp, sharp little piece at the end. And what you would use a gold for is you would take a large animal like a cow or an ox or something and you'll poke it, right? And you'll poke it with this long stick. And what do you think going to happen when you poke that ox with the long stick? It's going to move. It's going to be like, oh, leave me alone. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Start moving to, the, to whatever direction. So sometimes you can't really push no eye. You can walk into an ox try to push. That thing ain't going to budge. You know what I'm saying? You run into them. It's it. People do it. See, these people. <laughs> <laughs> Cow tip <it. laughs> Bro, these people are sick old. You know yeah, I used to want to do that. <laughs> they want to they go and knock over cows. You know what I'm saying? Because it's hard for the cows hilarious. to get up. You know what I'm saying? But, you know what I'm saying? I for the most part. For the most part, the reason why that's a thing is because it's very difficult to move them. You know what I'm saying? So you walk up, like one of us try to walk up to a cow and just try to push it. That thing ain't going to budge. That thing going to look at you like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Move you out the way, right? So you have a goal, and with the goal, you could poke it, and that'll make it kind of move in whatever direction you want so you could control it. So I'm trying to get you back in behind your fence. I'll poke you with the goal until you get back behind your fence. Right, it ain't to hurt it and to kill it. It just try to you know give it a little incentive to kind of keep moving, right? So it's saying the words of the wise are like gold and what? And nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. It's like being poked with a gold or with nails. You have to understand that reference. When wise people are talking, it's not gonna feel good. Right? When people are telling you wise things, it's not going to be like, oh, you know what? That made me just feel great. It's going to be a challenge for you. It's going to be poking you to go in a direction that you didn't originally want to go. It's going to be annoying. It's going to feel like somebody judging you. It's going to feel like you exposed. It's going to feel like, oh, he just always want to control me. Or she just always want me to do it her way. That's how it feels when somebody wise is talking to you. When you hear wise words, right? A lot of times we go with what feels good. Remember a couple of weeks ago when we was talking, we were talking about Rehoboam. And Rehoboam asked for it. Rehoboam was the son of Solomon. And Rehoboam asked for advice from the counselors that Solomon had. And when he asked for that advice, he was like, how should I answer the, 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 the uh, northern tribes? Right? Israel is coming to me and they say that we working them too hard. He said, your father worked me too hard. You know what I'm saying? He said, how should I answer them? The wise counselor came back to him and was like, listen, you answer them nicely today, they'll serve you forever. These boys will serve you forever, you answer them nicely. But him as the king, he had a different mindset. He looking at it like, these boys ain't working hard. You know what I'm saying? Like, these boys kind of got it easy. He may not have believed that they had it as bad as they thought they had it. So in his mind, that's not the direction he wanted to go. The words of the wise were like golds, but you know what? He resisted against the golds. Right? He resisted against them poles. Like, no, nah, I'm not going to do it. I don't want to go that direction. And sometimes you get a cow that do that. Or you get a bull. You know what I'm saying? You poke him and you know what he's going to do? He's going to charge at your butt. 
right? Instead of going the other direction that you want him to go, he's going to run right at you. He's going to he gonna try to hurt you and get you out of his way. And that's what we do as people in our life that love us. People in our life that's trying to get us to do the right thing, try to get us to look at things right. But because we so dead set on doing what we want to do, what happens is we attack the person trying to help us, just like the bull would. Right? You poke the bull, what do you think the bull going to do? All right, I'm going to go, no, nah, boy, I'm about to knock your butt off. You try to poke me again. That's what we do. We attack the people that's trying to help us go in the right direction. That's what happens. So you look at it, he's telling you, it's a wise man talking to us right now. He's saying, the wise words are like gold. Keep going, what happened? And nail, as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. And further by these, my son, be admonished. He said, further by these, my son, be admonished. Right here is how I name my boy right here. His word, his word admonished in Hebrew is Zahar. Right? So this, when you look at that, he's saying, be, his name means warning. Right? Admonished. That means warning. Right? So he's saying, listen, by these, my son, be warned. The stuff I'm telling you, be warned about it. Be thinking about it because it's going to happen. Right? Watch this. Of making many books, there is no end. He said, look, anybody can go out there and make darn books. That's why you see all these darn Christian, darn book, goodness gracious, a purpose-driven life. You know what I'm saying? The, uh, what's the other one? What's the TDJ's book? Uh, I forget. Man. That, one, that one might be the TDJ's book, really, but... You know what I'm saying? You got all these Christian yeah, books that are trying to tell you Hebrew, about another book yeah. that's telling you about salvation or telling you about how to live your yeah, life. Hebrew books and all that. You got all these Hebrews yeah, that write these books the and write these books. blogs and write all this stuff. And it's a lot of information. Matter of fact, the average Hebrew you talk to, they ain't even trying to listen to you about no scripture. Because it's a pride fight for them, right? It's not, it's, not really about, it's not really about learning what the Most High God has. It's a pride fight. It's about who knows the most, who read the book, who can assert the most dominance. So now, okay, yeah, you know the scripture pretty well, but have you read the book of Tophet or to Tobit? The Apocrypha. Have you read the, the Apocrypha? All right, what about the book of Jasher, though? What about the book of Enoch? Oh, you read the books that they kept out of the New Testament? Right, all these different things that they try to get into, and it's like, well, actually, yes, I've read a lot of that stuff. Yes, actually, but what are we talking about? We talking about the scripture right now. Well, you know that would have been scripture, okay, for sure. He, that's, this is what he's trying to pre-warn, and he's warning us and letting us know. He said, "Be admonished." That word "admonished" means warned, right? Be warned that of making many books, there is no end. There's always going to be books, right? But what happened? And much study is a weariness of the flesh. Mm-hmm. You get the study and the study and the studying. That's a weariness of the flesh. Keep going. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. So after everything is said and done, what is the duty of man, the purpose of man, right?
Test, test, we back. Look like we back. back. So that's the whole duty of the, of the matter, right? That we have to keep the commandments and we have to fear God. These people don't teach us that. They teach us to chase our own desires. They teach us to get rich. They teach us to do all these things, but they don't teach us how to love God. They don't teach us how to keep the commandments. You never gonna hear that. You never gonna hear. You never gonna hear a Christian come up to you and talk about, "Hey, it's really important to keep the commandments." You know what they gonna do? They gonna make they claim telling you how much works don't matter, that God don't care about works, and you can't earn your way. You can't earn your way into like, what, what are y'all even talking? Where do y'all get this language from? Who's talking to y'all about earning something? Like, why do you even bring that up? As soon as you get to talking about, man, we really got to do what God say. You know, you can't earn your way. Shut up. Like, what are you talking about? Nobody's even, you know what I'm saying? But they do that because that's a goal talk. Every time, every time somebody talk about the commandment, it's a goal poking them. So they attack it. No, you can't earn your way. It's not about works. Paul said, not by works. Like, man, you don't even know what you're talking about. You don't understand Paul. You don't understand nothing he's writing. Right? So that's what we try to do. We try to come here. We try to understand. We can understand the New Testament if we understand the Old Testament. We're going to understand the Old Testament if we understand the law. And we're going to understand the law if we serve the Most High God. Period. Based off of that foundation, can't nobody lie to us. You can't just say anything to us because we know it. We know the foundation. You can't tell me... You can't tell me something that God believe or God going to do or something about the character of God that's not consistent with his entire book. We're familiar with it. We go through it from front to back, year after year after year. We reading through this thing in order, going through it. Five, six times we didn't did this. Right? Because it is important to understand this is what the book is saying. You can't mess that up. If you understand it, can't nobody just come to you and be like, oh, no, God loves everybody. No, nah, that thing going to ring off all types of alarms in your brain. Like, no, nah, that sounds great. But that's not quite like the man is a little more serious than what you're drinking him out to be. Right? Let's, uh, let's go ahead and pick up where we left off. We left off at what? 1 uh, Kings, well, Kings 15. 1 Kings 15. Before we go there, let's go to, uh, let's go to 1 Chronicles 12, maybe. Did we already read 1 Chronicles 12? So we read 2 Chronicles 11. Oh, my bad. 2 Chronicles 12. Let's go to uh, 2 Chronicles 12, verse 1. And then we'll go back to 1 Kings 15. And it came to pass, when Rehoboam had established the kingdom... And that strengthened himself, he mm -hmm. forsook the law of Yahuwah and, the, and all Israel with him. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass that in the fifth year of King Rehoboam, Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem because they had transgressed against Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. When the 1,200 chariots and 60,000 horsemen and the people were without number that came with him out of Egypt, the Lubims, the Sukims, and the Ethiopians, and he took the fenced cities which pertained to Judah and came to Jerusalem. Then came Shemaiah, the prophet to Rehoboam, and to the princes of Judah that were gathered together to Jerusalem because of Shishak, and said unto them, Thus says Yahuwah. Right, so now remember, Rehoboam was acting up. Right? He kind of doing whatever he wanted to do. Not as bad as Jeroboam, but he kind of doing whatever he wanted to do too out, out in Judah. Remember, Jeroboam was in the northern, northern tribes. But Rehoboam was in the south. He kind of doing whatever he wanted to do, too. So now the king of Egypt kind of brought a whole bunch of different people together. Kind of think of it as like a league of nations, right? A team of all different nations. And they came together. And he like, oh, we about to take these boys out. So then the prophet came to Rehoboam and he tried to give him a warning. Watch this. Then came Shemaiah, the prophet, to Rehoboam. And to the princes of Judah that were gathered together to Jerusalem because of Shishak, and said unto them, Thus says Yahuwah, You have forsaken me, and therefore I have also left you in the hand of Shishak. Right? It's important to know that. He's saying, This is what God is saying. You have forsaken me. Right? In other words, you walked away from me. And he's telling you, So for that reason, I'm giving you over. I'm walking away from you. This is how God is. It's not that God loves everybody's stuff. 
God will, you know how people be saying, you know what I'm saying, the kids keep that same energy, or I'm going to match your energy, or whatever y'all be saying, right? That's what God be doing. You you get that energy, like, for sure. But the kids say, it's up. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's up. You know what I'm saying? When God say, listen, when you do it, that's what God be looking like. All right, what's up then? For sure. Let's do it then. Right? He going to give you whatever it is. So you, when you get to walking with you, when we out here and we get tempted to do whatever we want to do and we get to walking away from God or ignoring God or telling ourselves, nope, I don't want to think about what the right thing is. I'm going to do this. And we do it. Well, God be like, okay, we'll do that. Because I'm going to be over here and I'm not going to look out for you the way I was looking out for you. Right? That's how it be. Let's keep going. Whereupon the princes of Israel and the king humbled themselves, and they said, The Lord is righteous. And when the Lord saw that they humbled themselves, the word of the Lord came to Shemaiah again, saying, They have humbled themselves. Therefore, I will not destroy them, but I will grant them some deliverance. Right? So now after the people humbled themselves, in other words, they kind of looked at it and was like, Nah, you know what? We did mess up. We do need to serve the Most High God. We do need to correct ourselves. Right? They started to correct themselves. And when the Most High God saw that, he was like, all right, all right, all right. I ain't going to wipe these boys all the way out. I'll give them a little bit of deliverance. But not all the way. Watch this. I will grant them some deliverance. And my wrath shall not be poured out upon Jerusalem by the hand of Shishak. Nevertheless, they shall be his servants, that they may know my service in the service of the kingdoms of the countries. That's right. So Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem and took away the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. He took all. He carried away also the shields of gold which Solomon had made, mm -hmm. instead of which King Rehoboam made shields of brass. We read this one, right? Yeah. So let's go, let's go back to, uh, our, our, give me 14. Uh, 14. I think we, yeah, I think we read this in, uh, read this in Kings. Give me uh, 2 Chronicles 14. That boy Solomon was right. You know what I'm saying? Right, right after he died, it wasn't even his second or third son that did it. It was the one, it was right after. Him. Yep. So Abijah slept. Well, this is uh, talking about Abijah. Abijah. All right, go ahead and take me over to First uh, Kings 14. Then. Yeah, cause we didn't read about him. Yet. That was a little too far. All right, so on the screen, we're kind of looking at the kings that we own. But right now, we're dealing with Rehoboam and Jeroboam, right? Rehoboam and Jeroboam. We know Rehoboam just died, all right, or is mm -hmm. about to die. Yeah, Rehoboam died. Um, so we're about to get into his son, Abijah. So let's hear about it. At that time, Abijah, the son of Jeroboam, fell sick. And Jeroboam said to his wife, Arise. This is 14? Yeah. We, we read this too, right? We don't, we don't so 15. this is 15. We don't 15. Right? So last week we talked about how Jeroboam had a son. Jeroboam's son, got, his name was Abijah also, just like Rehoboam's son is, is Abijah. Jeroboam's son got sick. Jeroboam tried to sneak to the prophet that told him that he would take over the northern kingdom. But he didn't, he didn't want to let him know who he was, so he sent his wife and told him to disguise, his wife to disguise herself. The prophet already knew, right? So he commanded that Jeroboam, I mean, he uh, prophesied that Jeroboam and his whole family was going to die. All right? He said, your whole family, everybody that, that pee against the wall, you know what I'm saying? Your whole family going to die. Watch this. Now, in the 18th year of, the, of King Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, reigned Abijam over Judah. Mm -hmm. Three years reigned he in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Ma uh, Maekah, the daughter of Abishalom. Mm -hmm. And he walked in all the sins of his father, which he had done before him. And right. his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as the heart of David his father. That's right. So Rehoboam, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, his dad messed up, and then Abijah is doing the same thing that Rehoboam is doing. And that's Abijah's dad, right? You kind of look at how it kind of flow down, right? And if you look at how it flow down, you got anywhere that you see that yellow arrow going, that means that that's a that's a descendant, that's a child, right? So you see it flow straight down from Solomon to Rehoboam to Abijah, right? So that, that's that, you know what I'm saying? Solomon was his granddad, 
Keep going. Let's see. Nevertheless, for David's sake, did the Lord his God give him a lamp in Jerusalem to set upon his son after him and to establish Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Because David did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord and turned not aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, except only the matter of Uriah the Hittite. Mm -hmm. And there was war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam all the days of his life. Yeah, I think Sister Sharon, right, she said we left off on 1610. Oh. Yeah, I think she's right because uh, we read this too. All right, my bad. Let me see, where are we at? 16? What's 16 say? 16, 10, no, we I, left our... No, we, we, didn't get, we didn't get to 16. I don't remember. We didn't get to that was 15, though, right? This is 15. We definitely read that. I don't remember. What's at the end of 15? We didn't get to Asa. We talking about how Asa reigned in his stead. That's at the end of 15? No, in the middle of 15 is Asa. We didn't even talk about Asa. All right, keep going then. Now, the rest of the acts of Abijam and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah? Mm -hmm. And there was war between Abijam and Jeroboam. And Abijam slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David. And Asa, his son, reigned in his stead. All right. So now we get on to the next son. The next son is Asa. Right. So we're dealing with Rehoboam. Then we go to Abijah. And then the next son is Asa. Right here. Right. And Jeroboam is still alive at this point. Let's keep going. And in the 20th year of Jeroboam, king of Israel reigned Asa over Judah. Mm -hmm. And 40 and one years reigned he in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Maacah, the daughter of Abishalom. Mm -hmm. And Asa did that which was right in the eyes of Yahuwah, as did David his father. Mm -hmm. And he took away the Sodomites out of the land and removed all the idols that his fathers had made. Mm -hmm. And also Maacah, his mother, even her, he removed from being queen because she had made an idol in a grove and Asa destroyed her idol and burnt it by the brook Kidron. So now, what do you notice about Asa? Asa doing what's right. You notice that Asa, he ends up doing what's right. Grab, um, you might have to help me out. Um, G -g 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 -g. I always want to say Exodus 34, but I know that's not right. Um, I might have to cheat a little bit on this one. Let me see. We have... There we go. It is... Oh, it is Exodus 34. Exodus 34, 7. Oh, I should have just went with it. You know what I'm saying? I ain't even have the tea. I should have just went with it, Mel. It's Exodus uh, 34, verse 7. Keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and trans forgiving iniquity and trans and transgression and sin that will by no means clear the guilty. Mm -hmm. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the he children. He said doing what? Visiting the iniquities. He said visiting the iniquity. Of the fathers upon the children. Of the fathers upon the children, right? So when the, when the father sins, he visits that iniquity. The consequences of that iniquity also impacts the children of that father, right? Keep going. And upon the children's children until the third and to the fourth generation. He said he does it until the third or until the fourth generation. Right? It is important to understand how that works. Right? He's saying the consequences that come from the sins of the father is going to impact the kids, and it's going to do that for three or four generations. So a generation is saying, I'm the dad. Right? These are generations. Right? David is one generation, then Solomon is the second generation, and then Rehoboam is the next generation. And Abijah is the next generation, right? So let's count those generations. Who had the very first sin? David. David, right? Then he sinned in the matter of Uriah, the Hittite. So then let's count. One generation, Solomon. Solomon had to deal with that stuff, didn't he? Right? Solomon had to deal with the women. David had multiple wives. He even went out to go take another man's wife. 
So Solomon, he had that impact. He liked the women's, right? Then next, you got Rehoboam. Rehoboam didn't have as many wives as Solomon, but that boy still had a lot. He had a lot. That boy still had a lot. And he starts sinning. You remember, they, they did the same thing. Solomon sinned. His sin was he started to kind of follow after the gods and some of his wives and all that stuff. So then Rehoboam did the same thing. He kept it going, right? He had the high places, sacrificed to other gods, all that good stuff. Rehoboam tried to humble himself, though, at the end. We didn't hear that about Solomon, right? We didn't hear from Solomon at the end he tried to humble himself, right? But we did hear that about Rehoboam. So it's getting a little better, but still, you got two generations. Then you got the third generation, which is Abijah. And the book didn't go into too much detail, but it was like, yeah, Abijah, he's still wilding too. He did the same things, right? So that's three generations. And then what do you know? In the fourth generation, Asa's trying to straighten it up. Right? So Asa looking like, nah, man, we got to clean this up. We got to figure this out. We got to clean this up. Right? Because that's how the most high God works. Asa didn't, because he, he made it to past that third generation, the most high God didn't visit it to the fourth generation in this case. And because of that, Asa didn't have all of that weight from the past generations on it. He didn't have that generational curse, as some people might call it. Right? So he, he could be free of it. And now he started to operate closer to David. Not quite like David, but closer to David. So he's trying to clean stuff up. Right? Keep going. In Exodus? Um, no, no, no. Keep going. Uh, where are we? Matter of fact, grab, uh, grab 2 Chronicles chapter 14 now. 2 Chronicles chapter 14. Cause it's gonna give us a little bit more detail. And we're gonna follow this same pattern, right? As we go through as we go through this whole list, we're gonna follow the pattern of how these things are visited. Each time the one of our king sin, we're gonna kind of look at three or four of his sons, gonna have to deal with that mess. And then you're going to see it start to get cleaned up. Almost every time we're going to see it's going to have to happen after three or it's going to happen after four. Keep going. It's important that we kind of notice this stuff because this stuff is not it, like it's not explained and made obvious in the Bible. Right. You just kind of have to see the biblical concepts and that's how you kind of have to look at life, too. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's not it's not it's not like a, a book in the Bible that can say, hey, this is how, exactly how it worked. If you notice, you will see that the kings and you know what I'm saying? You don't. You only pick that up by reading the Bible and being familiar with it, by being educated on what's, what's going on. But the biblical principles are always there, right? The stuff that's in our law is always playing out, right, constantly. And that's what we look for, because that's how you find Yahushua. That's how you find the Messiah. Keep going. So Abijah slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David. Mm -hmm. And Asa, his son, reigned in his place. Mm-hmm. In his days, the land was quiet ten years. Mm -hmm. And Asa did that which was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. For he, for he took away the altars of the strange gods and the high places and break down the images and cut down the groves. Mm -hmm. And commanded Judah to seek Yahuwah, the God of their fathers, and to, and to do the law and the commandment. Mm -hmm. Also, he took away out of all the cities of Judah the high places and the images. And the kingdom was quiet before him. Mm -hmm. And he built fenced cities in Judah, for the land had rest. And he had no war in those years, because the Lord had given him rest. Mm -hmm. Therefore he said unto Judah, Let us build these cities, and make about them walls and towers, gates and bars, while the land is yet before us. Mm -hmm. Because we have sought Yahuwah our God, we have sought him, and he has given us rest on every side. So they built and prospered. And Asa had an army of men that bare targets and spears. Out of Judah, 300,000, and out of Benjamin that bear shields and drew bows, 280,000. All these were mighty men of valor. And there came out against them Zerah, the Ethiopian, with a host of a 1,000, mm -hmm. and 300 chariots, and came unto uh, Marisha. All right, so Marisha. now the Ethiopian, the African, came after us. Right, Ethiopia was like, yo, right? Had, he had a whole bunch of people with him, too. Right? Watch what happened. But remember, Asa had peace for a little bit. So Asa, during the time of peace, he wasn't just relaxing. He started building up the cities. He started building up the army. Right? Watch this. Keep going. Then Asa went out against him, and they set the battle in array in the valley of Zeph 
Zephathah and Marisha. Mm -hmm. And Asa cried unto Yahuwah his God and said, Yahuwah, it is nothing with you. It is nothing with you to help, whether with many or with them that have no power. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rest on you. And in your name, we go against this multitude. Mm -hmm. O Lord, you are our God. Let not man prevail against you. Mm -hmm. So the Lord smote the Ethiopians before Asa and before Judah, and the Egyptians fled. And Asa and the people that were with him pursued them unto Gerar. And the Ethiopians were overthrown that they could not recover themselves, for they were destroyed before Yahuwah mm -hmm. and before his host. And they carried away very much spoil. And they smote all the cities round about Gerar, for the fear of the Lord came upon them. And they spoiled the cities, for there was exceedingly much spoil in them. They smote also the tents of cattle and carried away sheep and camels in abundance and returned to Jerusalem. All right? So the Ethiopians, are the Ethiopians a nearby country for us? Or mm. far? It's pretty far. Right? Ethiopians was a far country for us. They wasn't one of the countries that the Most High God said, you know what I'm saying, you can't make a league with them. So you notice, we chased them boys down, and we see where they was camped at, and we start taking all their stuff. Right? After, after they, 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 they tried to make war with us, we went, chased them down, found where they was camped out near our places, and we took them. They wasn't near us. They didn't live near us, but they was close to us in the sense of where they was camped out at. Right? So they were kind of over there where the Philistines are at. They was camped out where the Philistines are. Right? And we took them, took all their stuff back. We took their animals, took any goods, and we, that's when the book, when they say spoiled them, that's what it's talking about. It's saying we took all their stuff. Right? Keep going. And the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Oded, and he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while you be with him. And if you seek him, he will be found of you. That's right. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. Right? So that's how God works. Underst Listen, if y'all don't do nothing else, understand that principle of God. Right? If you mess with me, I mess with you. That is throughout the book. No matter how, That's what he just said. Read it again for me. And I'm going to show you what he said in the New Testament too. The Lord is with you while you be with him. Uh -huh. And if you seek him, he will be found of you. Uh -huh. But if you forsake him, he will, he will forsake you. Right? So look. Most high God is with you when you when, when you with him. You seek him, he's going to be found of you. You don't seek him, you forsake him, he's going to forsake you too. That's how it works, right? This is... Uh, John chapter 15, real quick. And while we're getting that, uh, Sister Sharon, so look, the, the, the Ethiopians are, the answer is no. The Ethiopians, so Sister Sharon asked, are the Ethiopians the only tribe that haven't been conquered yet? So there's a, there are many different nations and people that haven't been conquered, right? We dealing with like a very, very small little piece on the map. Small part of the world. Yeah, very small part of the world. Is all types of like when when you read the history books and all that stuff, or when when you got your history teacher teaching you about this stuff. There's a whole lot of other stuff going on in different places of the world at this point, but we're just in this small area. In this small area is Israel and a bunch of nations around it. We conquered the nations that were very close to us, just kind of right in our area. So if I pull up the map. You know what I'm saying? Let me see if I can get a map up for you. If I pull up the map real quick. Let me see here. Right? So if I pull up this map here, this map is showing you all the areas that we would conquer. Now, if I look at this map real quick, just so you can get like a real picture of what, what we're talking about and what we're dealing with, right? So let's say... Google Earth. You know what I mean? I'm going to show you how small Alright, so let's take a look at this. Can you see that? Okay. So, I'm going to show you how small this little area is. So, this is the whole world, right? Got the whole world, you know, little Christian song. Got the whole world in his hand. You know what I'm saying? It's the whole thing, right? And then you zoom in, and I know some Hebrew watching. How many people we got here? It got to be at least one Hebrew watching, because the Hebrew gonna say the world is flat. I already know. I don't know what's wrong with y'all, but listen, 
you're going to go here and this is the area. So that map that we was just looking at, this map, right? This map is capturing this area right here. Right? This area right here. So we took over a lot of the stuff in this very small area. If I zoom out, look how small that is, right? It's just this little dot right here, right? Ethiopia, though, is all over here, right? This is where Ethiopia, like, like today, Ethiopia is down here, right? But when they're talking about Ethiopia, they're talking about people that came from right here, right? So it's, 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 it's south of us. These are not people that we conquered. And then it's a whole bunch of other people. It's people in Egypt that we just had a fight, fight, fight with. We, haven't, we didn't conquer them. And then even going further, there's more people over here. Going way down here, the Queen of Sheba, she came from like somewhere down here, right? We didn't conquer her, right? It's a whole lot of other people. Of course, all the white folks that's up here, the Gentiles, the other Gentiles, they up here, we didn't conquer them. So it's a lot of people that we haven't touched and we haven't conquered at this point. But let's look at John chapter 15, because I want y'all to understand the concept, right? The concept is most High God said, look, if you seek me, I'll be found to you, right? And I'm with you as long as you with me, right? That's literally what he's saying. As long as you with me, I'm with you. But if you forsake me, I'm going to forsake you. The same concept we'll find in the New Testament this is John chapter 15, verse 1. I am the true vine, uh -huh. and my father is the husband. Man. Uh -huh. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. That's right. And every branch that he bear, that bears fruit, he purges he pur purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Correct. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. Mm -hmm. No more can you, except you abide in me. That's right. I am the vine, you are the branches. Uh -huh. He that abides in me, and I in him, the same bring forth much fruit. Uh -huh. For without me, you can do nothing. Without me, you can't do nothing. If Watch a, this. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. That's the same as saying, if you forsake me, I'll forsake you. He's saying, if you do not remain in me. He, you will be cast forth as a branch. Right? Keep going. Watch this. And is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Uh-huh. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. I got you if you got me, is what he's saying. Right? Keep going. He'll keep saying it. Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. Mm-hmm. As the Father has So shall you be my Christians. Disciples. So shall you be my Muslims. Disciple. So shall you be my Baptist. Mm -hmm. The book say disciple. Why am I going to call myself other? It's a promise attached to that. It's a, to that, it's a promise. He said, look, you do what I say. So shall you be my disciples. Why would I call myself a Christian? Show me in the Bible where there's a promise attached to being a Christian. Show me in the Bible where the most high God say, do this and you can be a Christian. That's why anybody can be a Christian. There's no, I laugh when I see Christian, you're not a real Christian. How are you going to tell somebody who a real Christian is? The thing is made up. Anybody can be a Christian. Any type of Christian you want to be. You can't judge nobody what type of Christian they are. These Christians are right when they say don't judge me. You know what I'm saying? Who's going to judge them on how to be a Christian? Keep going, let's see. As the Father loved me, so have I loved you. Continue uh -huh. in my love. That's right. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, uh -huh. even as I have kept the Father's commandments and abide in his love. Uh -huh. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Mm -hmm. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Watch this. Greater love has no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. That's right. You are my friends if, if, you, if you do whatsoever I command you. I got that. Right? That's the condition. If you do what I say, you're my friend. If you don't, you'll be cast away. <sighs> just, like a, just like a branch, a dried up branch, and it's going to wither. And you know what people do with dried up branches? They pick them up and make firewood out of them. That's what he just told you. It's the same thing he was telling you in the Old Testament. Right? Let's go back. It's the exact same thing he was telling you in the Old Testament. A lot of people like, that, like to imagine that like, Oh, no, when Jesus came, everything changed. That's a lie. Nothing changed. Nothing changed. It's the same prophecy that we've been waiting for since, since uh, waiting on since uh, Moses gave it to us. Mm -hmm. Right? 
Nothing changed. We just been waiting. And now the man is here. Let's see. Keep going. Where we leave off? Uh, Second Chronicles 15, verse 1. It's verse 1? Yeah. Okay. We can, we can stop there then. So we'll pick up, we'll pick up next week on uh, Second Chronicles. I think we'll pick up Second Chronicles 15. We might jump back over into Kings. Because, you know, it's different detail looks. It's uh, slightly different details in each of them. So I kind of want to touch on both of them so we can kind of see the differences. Um, any questions? Well, everybody sleep. Just ignore y'all. Y'all better oh, be ashamed of yourself. Knocked out. <laughs> any questions online? There's a delay. You know what I'm saying? I got to sit here and wait for y'all. That's all right. Y'all got the number. Text me if you have any questions. Let's go ahead and pray out. <clears throat> 